Hello, our next speaker, Pritam Bala from MIT, JDT University, Pune. He's going to deliver a talk on novel nanoparticles for smart drug delivery system. Uh, welcome you, sir. Please deliver your talk, sir. Good morning. Good morning, everyone present. Uh, I hope I'm audible to all of you present here. Uh, let me just start the video and share my screen uh, to present today's talk. Okay, so I hope um, audible and the presentation is visible now. Fine. So uh, again, good morning to everyone present and uh, a very warm welcome to the talk that I'll be giving. Uh, before starting, I would really like to take this opportunity to thank uh, SLI Webcasting Center, uh, Department of Botany, uh, Sri Venkateshwara University, Tirupati. Uh, for organizing this uh, amazingly well-structured event, uh, which is role of nanotechnology in uh, current scenario. So given this exact this current scenario, which is all around us, which is the pandemic situation that has affected the entire world, every family, every individual, we have lost many of our relatives, friends, mentors, many of our known associates, which is a really a sad and terrible situation. So in this situation, to come up with this kind of conference, which serves many purpose. First and foremost, we get together and discuss something which is so crucially important, which is a nanotechnology, because this technologies can be one of the window through which we can see and tackle this disease in a very different light. And this kind of conferences can be the common platform for a lot of collaborations and a lot of efforts uh, that can be initiated. So I would really like to thank again the entire organizing committee, the entire institution for putting this platform out there for all of us to discuss our and share our work. Having said that, uh, let's now get back to the talk that I'm supposed to deliver which so my talk as you can see in the current slide is basically will be taking cue from the conference theme which is the nanotechnology and to check some of the opportunities that we can create so in the name of novel nanoparticles so how we can create some of the new ideas new novel nanoparticles and kind of give a new light in terms of smart drug delivery. So that will be overall the topic which uh, I will be addressing uh, today. I'm Pritam Bala. I'm currently associated with MIT School of Bioengineering Sciences and Research, MIT Bio, uh, MIT ADT University, Pune, India. So this topic that I'm going to talk uh, will be structured in a way that I'll be giving a very basic information because I'm sure already we all of us know about nanotechnology some or the other way, but just to give an outline of that, I'll be talking very briefly about uh, what we are dealing with here, about the nanotechnology as a concept. And then straight away, I will dive down to the different works that are going on all around the globe. That will be short section on that. And then straight away, I will dive into the work that we are carrying on, carrying in our institute or I have already done in other institutes I was associated with, which is focusing again on the nanotechnology and drug delivery system. So, and then I will end up with a gist of all that I have talked about and a sweet note, hopefully. So after the entire talk, I'll be taking some of the questions, maybe two or three questions can be taken. 
uh, if that is okay with the organizing committee. And then uh, we'll conclude the session of my talk. So, uh, so having said that, let us start with the whole uh, talk process. So this will be more or less around 30 to 35 minutes. So I hope that uh, we all can uh, just dive into the main topic. So now coming back to the presentation as it is, you see the entire motivation for this talk is basically can be uh, segregated into these three things, which is uh, obviously the challenge, uh, how to tackle the challenge, the mode and the goal. So these three are kind of the motivation for this entire talk. The challenge is obviously uh, different diseases. So there are different deadliest diseases all around the globe, including the current one, which is the coronavirus. So apart from that, we have significant diseases that, like cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, malaria, tuberculosis, skin diseases, respiratory diseases. Now, subsequently, all these diseases are majorly focused on the South Asian Asian countries. Obviously, in West also, we do see a lot of these diseases, particularly the cardiovascular disease or cancer. But overall, if you focus, uh, these are kind of the diseases that we are facing on an everyday basis, and we are losing life everyday basis because of these diseases around the globe. So this is our major challenge. Again, just not to forget that Currently, the one that is going on, the coronavirus, is obviously, again, one of the major diseases now that we have to uh, tackle. Now, to deal with that, we need a mode. A mode of dealing with these diseases can be the nanotechnology one, which is the theme of this entire conference. So, and then to achieve that, to achieve a nanoparticle-based drug delivery, because so, to put it in a very simple format, nanotechnology is nothing but this nanoparticles are nothing but the cap, like the Ola, Uber, so on, so. And the passenger is basically the drug that we want to deliver it to some particular location. So that's how the mode works. I'm sure every one of us are aware of that. And ultimately the goal is that we need a good healthcare system and well-being. We want to live well and we want to help others live well and happy and healthy. So this is the entire motto of or motivation of the entire work that has been uh, going on all the way. So now with that, now when we're talking about nanotechnology, just to start this entire topic is that nanotechnology is not something a uh, new concept. Even though after Richard Feynman started the entire revolution of nanotechnology, uh, around 1950s, it seems like it's a new technique, it's a, it's a new concept. Once Richard Feynman gave the idea, once uh, Richard Feynman, after Richard Feynman giving the idea, once Drexler, E. Drexler talked more about it, once Taniguchi coined the term nanotechnology. So all this thing happened after 1950s. But then it is not a 100, 200 year old concept. The happenings of nanotech started almost 2000 years old. So whether all this glass technology that we see the colored glasses all around our church, mosque, temples, uh, in different civilizations, all these techniques that we see, it was all about nanotechnology. Now the people that time did not know that they are carrying out this kind of adventures. They did not term that as nanotech, but they were doing this kind of work. So this luster of glass technology, uh, wherein this kind of uh, colored glasses were created, were one of the primary examples of uh, nanotechnology. Also, if you talk about uh, particularly uh, Asian scenario, if you see a lot of the, whether it is art, religion, whether it is warfare, say for an example, art and religion, all the paintings that we see ar around our globe, many of those paintings were done using the carbon nanotechnology uh, tech, uh, tech. So uh, also the in the, case of warfare, if you see all this wood steel, Damascus steel, all this high uh, potential, high strength, and uh, amazingly designed fabrication of this kind of warfare technology was done through nanotech. Uh, Architecture-wise also, 
the picture that we see here is one of the amazing architecture of uh, Qutub Minar, which is in Delhi, India, which was a forge building done basically on an iron ore, which is again a nanotech marvel. Now, these are not our focus. Today's our focus, if it is the healthcare, even the healthcare system also, if we talk about nanotech, almost 1500 BC, we used to have this bhasmas, which is like the Ayurvedic bhasmas or the ashes, which was mixed with a lot of metal and uh, coal powder and other minerals to make it a composite, which was used for different healthcare purposes. Now, this was one of the primary source or primary ideas of nanotech in terms of healthcare that was happening uh, back then. So, whole over this entire idea, why I wanted to present that is that this whole idea of nanotech is not something new, but yes, we are every day we are realizing the, the importance of this topic with every invention, every effort. Say for an example, past two days, we have been listening to many amazing talks uh, where we are seeing the effect of nanotech in terms of healthcare, agriculture, so on and so forth. Now, coming back to the, the key player of this, the nanoparticles, obviously we all almost know about it, but just to give a brief, nanoparticles are nothing but any particles which is in the range of one to 100 nanometers. And the picture that we're seeing here is basically it shows from a tennis ball to a water molecule and then check that where our player stands, which is if you can see in the range of that virus antibody, those ranges. So all our devices that we are going to design has to fall into this category to term it as nano devices, whether it is nanopores, dry drivers, nanotubes, or CNTs, quantum dots, QDs, so on and so forth. So this is basically what we are dealing with. Now, if you forget the sophisticated properties, the basic property that every of nanoparticle should carry is basically the high S to V ratio, the high surface to volume ratio. Basically, if you take a big chunk and crush it to a smaller ones, the surface area increases, even though their volumes, so the ratio, the S to V ratio drastically increases uh, when we're talking about nanoparticles. So because of this increased surface area, the reactivity increases. Because of this increased reactivity, basically the whole process becomes faster. So that is how the nanoparticle is so efficient than a normal particle. And that is why it is able to interact with a different biomolecules on the surface of the cells. And because of its increased surface ratio, the drug absorption is also amazingly increased when, it, when we're dealing with nanoparticles. Uh, and we can design the particles which can diffuse through different system and reach the target area. That is our primary goal to design a cap so that it can deliver the, uh, the passenger to a designated location. So now this entire thing has to happen without disturbing the basic property of the drug. So the active compound of the drug should not be damaged, but the whole pharmacokinetic property has to be drastically increased if you're talking about the healthcare system. So that is that, that's how our entire device is designed. Now, this again, the particular top slide basically talks about the entire scales, whether it is a macro scale, micro scale to nano scale. So our focus is on the nano scale. And in this nano scale, we have different nanoparticles as the drug delivery system. Now, once we try to make advancement and make it more sophisticated, it becomes a smarter drug delivery system. So whether it is liposo, whether it is a silver nanoparticle, whether it is solid lipid SLNs, or whether it is a polymeric one, stent trimers, CNTs. So no matter whatever we make uh, now in this zone of nanoscale, that becomes our uh, target uh, conjugate. Now, in this whole realm of nano devices, we have different particles. It is not only singular one. We have different, amazingly designed particles for different applications. So we can have, uh, for an example, a mesoporous nanocarriers. Now these nanocarriers are basically porous. 
So in that pose, we can fill in the drug of our interest. So that drug can be anything starting from a simple wound healing drug or a simple drug for headache to a drug for cancer. So anything it can, uh, that can hold depending on the application. Now, this kind of nanocarriers also, we can add a lot of surface modification can be done on that. For an example, as you can see, the mesoporous nanocarriers, different target agents can be added so that it can, you can target the particle to a particular location or different surface functionalization can happen so that you can add maybe multiple drugs. So, or maybe you can do something so that it will maintain the pH of the entire conjugate system or it can be a magnetic nanoparticles added and then you can channelize the entire particle to a particular location through out magnet control. So all these things can be done uh, in particularly one of these mesoporous nanocarriers. Now the core shell nanocapsule is another type of nanocarriers that can be used. Now these are all the smart nano devices that we can design particularly. The core shell nanocapsules is one of the simplest one to device but yet uh, much effective. So here we have basically a core where we load the cargo or the biological entity, and we have a surface polymeric matrix. So particularly in this can be used for, used for different biopolymers can be used to make this. So, and then we can also add a surface modification of the target agent to target the entire particle to a particular location. So this is a core shell nanocapsule. We also can have a SLNs, the solid lipid nanoparticles, wherein we have solid lipid core in the center, and then we can have an emulsifier layer on the surface. Or we can have a liposome, where we can use the basic property of this dual uh, layer of this lipid, wherein the hydrophobic and hydrophilic layer, that can be used particularly to load our different drugs inside. Also, we can have something called biomimetic nanoparticles where we kind of mimic the entire biological system. We can have different cell membranes, we can have different pores, different channels, and then inside we can just load our uh, polymeric nanoparticles or the drugs. So now this entire drug basically will be coming out through different pores and channels, same like in our biological cells, it will happen. So it will kind of mimic the uh, biological system. That is what is called the biomimetic nanoparticles. Or we can have one of the primary and most successful uh, way of delivering drug through polymeric uh, matrices or polymeric measles. So wherein we can have a bioactive cargo again in the center, and then we have different block polymers, copolymers around that. Now, if you see in all of that, the surface modifications are there. It is an option. You can make surface modification or you cannot make also depending on the requirement. But the basic idea is taking either this mesoporous nanocarriers, core shells, lipid, solid lipid NPs, liposomes, different biomimetic molecules or polymers. The whole purpose is to make a device, make it smarter so that it delivers the drug, particularly in this kind of scenario, in a smart way and controlled way. Now, when you're talking about controlled way, basically we're talking about drug delivery. Now, drug delivery means nothing but taking a drug and delivering it to a particular location. So, administering this pharmaceutical compound to a location. That is what the entire drug delivery is talking about. Now, it can be either non invasive, invasive, topical, transmucosal, inhalation, any of these routes, the entire drug can be delivered. And then, basically, the problem that in any case, drug delivery is done. So, we are taking a tablet today, it is nothing but drug delivery. But the problem with conventional drug is that once you're sending the drug, it goes through a lot of degradation process and enzymatic uh, treatment in our body. Our body starts secreting a lot of enzymes, the drugs are, gets attached to that and starts degrading. We have to avoid that because we don't always want a drug to be treated right in the mouth itself or the location where we're giving itself. Maybe the desired location is far away from where we're administering. So, to save that drug, we need a proper system. So the whole process is that, the issue with this, that is why the conventional delivery is that first, once we're giving the drug, there's an erratic release. If you're giving a 100 mg of drug, it is seen that immediately it is released, which is not required. So this erratic release, uncontrolled release is a problem. And obviously because there is erratic release, the chances of toxicity is hugely high. 
And then that is why one of the, say for an example, we are giving an injection or we are giving a lot of more drug, for example, in cancer treatment. So that becomes a patient compliance. Patient doesn't want to go for this kind of heavy load drugs. And that is why the non-specificity of the drug, the non-targeted property of the drug becomes a big issue. So ultimately, the drug is uncontrolled, toxic, and unsustained release. So these are the problems with the conventional drug delivery system. That is where the requirement for nanotechnology-based drug delivery system, smart nanotech drug delivery system comes into the picture. So this particular slide will give an idea of why we require this. It is just that any drug that you give, that drug, if for an example is given through our blood plasma, the drug will be circulated in all our body through blood plasma, our blood. So now once we do that, after administering the drug, there will be ups and downs of the drug concentration in our blood plasma. In conventional system, what we see is that once we give a drug, it goes, it shoots up and then it goes down after some time. So again, to maintain that proper, the controlled level or the therapeutic level, we have to always continuously give the drug to maintain that level. So this is a hazard. This, is, this increases the drug load in the patient body, which is not desired. So to maintain that, we need a system which is controlled, which is long lasting, so that we don't have to administer the drug for a longer period. And it is entirely slow releasing one when, as and when required. So this is the desired profile that we require for which we need a controlled smart drug delivery system. So controlled means we should have a nanoparticle as we talked about as a device to deliver it. And then we have a target molecule and the drug so that the nanoparticle takes the drug and delivers to the target particular space wherein we want to give. Now the drug nanoparticle can be of all this thing that we talked about, whether it is liposomes, nanoparticles, block polymers, copolymers, dendrimers, so on and so forth. And it should survive different parameters, whether it is uh, pH, enzymes, so on and so forth. So now, as we talked about, we have different nanoparticles. Uh, we have different modes to deliver it. In our work that we will be talking about, uh, we will be talking about particularly taking one biopolymers and check how we can modify that for our own purpose and how we have worked on that to make the modif surface modifications on top of that. So now when you're talking about biopolymers as uh, smart nanoparticles, biopolymers are one of the primary and very interesting uh, candidate for creating a lot of drug delivery devices. Initially, when we had different chemical, uh, chemicals for preparing nano devices, we were suffering from toxicity, non-specificity, uh, targets were not, could not be decided properly. So we needed something which is, which will give lesser toxic, which will be more friendly to the body where it is delivered or administered. So that is why we came up with this idea of uh, biopolymers. Now, in this biopolymers or the polymeric biomolecules, there are a lot of, so these are the different biopolymers that we all have. We have proteins, we have synthetic biopolymers. Uh, under synthetic, we have degradable, non-degradable, we have polysaccharide structures and different biopolymers. In that, we have some novel ones also that we have worked with, which is like Phytos and Pululand, which from 1980s, 1990s, a lot of work has started, but still not enough. So slowly we are realizing the importance of these biopolymers in terms of uh, therapeutic efficacy. Uh, now, the application are huge because of these properties of biopolymers. Because it is biopolymer, they are biocompatible. You can form gel, film, anything that you want. Uh, you can make a lot of solid nanostructures like micro needles with these biopolymers. And obviously, it is economical because it is isolated from biological sources. So, whether you can make a film, coating material, targeted drug delivery, or adhesive material, all can be uh, made from these biopolymers. So, it, whether it is a pharmaceutical industry, whether it is a clinical industry or healthcare industry, these biopolymers hold an amazing future. Whether it is anti-cancer therapy, antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, whether it is a vet medicines or vaccines, anti-tumor, so 
particularly vaccines, means for example, the COVID vaccine. So anything, any of this thing can, uh, the nanoparticles can be used to make that. That is the, one of the reason the market of biomaterials has increased hugely in past uh, 20 odd years. Now, in our case that we'll be talking about is particularly with one of the unique biopolymer, which is called pululan, which is uh, a unique biopolymer isolated from the pululanase. And uh, so this is particularly a polysaccharide biopolymer uh, that consists of uh, maltotriose. So it is isolated from a fungus, which is aerobicidium uh, pululans. Now, this particular uh, biopolymer already has been used hugely in many other scenarios. For an example, in the industry, in uh, as a different derivatives or food agriculture industry has used these biopolymers quite a bit in around early 80s, 90s. But particularly pharmaceutical industry was not aware of the potential of this particular compound lot uh, before. But then slowly we are realizing the, the potential of this unique biopolymer. I'm talking about unique because it has different distinct trait, trait like adhesiveness, trait like oxygen permeability. So all these different traits that it has uh, are or, or, or target specificity, organ specificity. So all these things are quite interesting in terms of their property of this particular biopolymer uh, pululan. Now, as I was telling, the properties means we're talking about pululan as a biopolymer, it is non-toxic, it is biodegradable, biocompatible, it is non-immunogenic, it doesn't elicit immune response much. Uh, it's a natural source isolated from, it's non-mutagenic, it doesn't cause mutation in our body, it is non-carcinogenic and oxygen blocking capacity it has. So, so you see, all of these properties can be used individually, each of these properties for making different smart nano devices. The advantage is that because of this unique properties, it's, you can make your ultimate uh, nano device pH responsive. So according to different pHs, it will respond differently. As an example, our body is made up of different pHs. Different place has different pH. The pH of tongue is different than pH of liver. pH of liver is different than pH of blood. So because of this, a single system cannot be used. You have to modify the system according to where we are giving the drug. So that can be done through this kind of unique biopolymers. Uh, it can be organ specific. For example, the pululan can be seen as organ specific to liver. So not, relate, uh, not only confined to this, different biopolymers has that different specificity. So that can be worked upon. Uh, one of the fine property and very interesting one is that we can make pululan hydrophobic or hydrophilic based on their surface modifications. So that something that we have done in our study, which I will show in, uh, in briefly. Uh, and also you can tune the drug whether you want to do a sm smart, fast release or a slow release. So that is where the smart work comes that you can tune the particle according to your requirement and then make different uh, products, whether it is patch, whether it is microneedle, whether it is gel, or whether it is just particles. So any of that you can make through this kind of uh, unique biopolymers. Now, one of the work that we have done, particularly with this pululan is that, uh, now this pululan we have used, if you take a pululan, it is basically a hydro, highly hydrophilic molecule. It dissolves easily. We wanted to uh, prepare a drug a composite that can travel all the way to different organs in our body system. So to travel all the way, we needed the drug, the entire composite to be hydrophobic. But the problem is that even though pululan is organ specific, it is hydrophilic. So we had to make it hydrophobic without changing the property of target specificity. So there, what we did is that uh, we took pululan, we make a surface modification and we made acetylation process through which we make pululan to pululan acetate. Now, surprisingly, now this idea, again, this is a protocol that was done back uh, in early 80s, uh, late 80s by Motozato. But then we, we modified the entire process and we made some changes in the parameters and made that entire process again, uniquely different uh, from what where we started with. But ultimately the aim was to make a hydrophobic pululan acetate nanoparticle from a hydrophilic pululan moiety. So after this entire process, what we had is that we had a core shell particle where it, outside we had a hydrophilic outside and inside we had a hydrophobic core. So that hydrophobic core is not totally was ready to load any of the drugs inside. So it was like this, that is why it is like a self-assembled uh, nano composite 
wherein we can load any of the drug in situ when we are synthesizing it. So this was one of the approach that we made through uh, which we can deliver any drug of our interest. We did a lot of study on this. Once we prepared this particle, we did particularly the hydrophilic, hydrophobic test where we wanted to know that whether what we have made is indeed a hydrophobic nature or not. So we found out that it is even after loading the drug, uh, as you can see in the particular slide on the left hand side, uh, even after loading the drug in dr drug loaded fluid acetate nanoparticle was showing hydrophobicity to, in nature because the, the entire angle, the contact angle was not decreased as in the pululan did. Also, we checked out about the particles uh, structures, the morphology through SEM and through DLS, uh, where we checked that the particle was around uh, 38 to 40 nanometer. And after the drug loading, the size increased to around 100 nanometer or so. So, and also with SEM, we confirmed the size and the shape, which was almost in a smooth spherical shape. With AFM also, we corroborated the entire uh, data there. And also with TGA and uh, FGIR, we also found out about the drug loading efficiency and also the bonding. So the bonding was important because we want to know that after the drug loading, because we are calling it a smart drug, the active component of the drug should not be damaged. So the signature of those active components were present in the final component, wherein all the other features were also present. So mostly by hydrophobic or this kind of interactions, the entire drug was attached to the core of this uh, the cell assembled fluid and acetate nanoparticle. Then we did a study where we saw that this entire nanoparticle that we prepared and after the drug loading, the release profile was pH sensitive. So if we talked about this pH 7.2 and pH 4, the acidic and the neutral pH almost, uh, we checked that with neutral pH, the release is much more faster than acidic pH. So that means the whole point was that the entire concept was pH sensitive drug release. So these are the properties that make this kind of nanocomposite a smart one. So not only it is hydrophobic, but also now it is a pH sensitive drug release profile. Our next approach was again to check the same pululan, not the pululan acetate, but the pululan and take some of the drugs and then load it and check, can we use this kind of drug like curcumin or different spices and, uh, uh, and make this entire composite a solid uh, lipid nanoparticle and then attach the drug on the surface of the nanoparticle and then go for the drug delivery system and check the efficacy of that. So now, uh, again, in particular, this example, this experiment or this project that we did, one of the problems was that the, the spices sometimes were not easily dissolvable. So we created a system, we created an entire procedure where we can dissolve this entire uh, spices well and then load it on, on, the, on the surface of the nano composite. Then again, we did a lot of characterization process where we saw that different these particles were, what are the sizes after loading, before loading, the stability also, wherein after one month or two months, if the stability was still intact or not, we found out, yes, it is intact. Then also we found out again, the pH dependent release profile here. For this one, the pH, in, we, can, we also saw that even this particle was pH sensitive. And then we saw different drug loading cap efficiency where we saw that changing the polymeric ratio, the polymers and the, and the substrate, if you can change that, different conjugates were giving different encapsulation efficiency. So we found out which exact ratio, which formulation was giving us the highest drug loading efficiency. We found out that almost we could reach 83% drug loading efficiency with some of our formulations, which we uh, later used for all other uh, purposes. Now, we also checked about the antimicrobial study, where when we saw that the given formulation that we prepared were gram positive and gram negative. In both cases, they were showing antimicrobial uh, activity. So we checked with different uh, SREs, B subtilis, aeruginosa, and fragilis, uh, gram negative and gram positive, both bacteria. We saw that it is indeed uh, antimicrobial. We also checked about their MIC and BC, the uh, inhibitory effect and the bactericidal effect of that. And we found out compared to the only spice or only the drug, when we prepared a, the a nanoparticle based drug delivery conjugate, that was showing much more increased property in terms of their MIC and NBC. That means with lesser concentration, we were killing more uh, bacteria. So this was again a good profile that we found out. 
we, we didn't stop there. We also checked the same formulation for different uh, animal study for toxicity analysis. And we found out that whether it, in terms of acute dermal, the mortality, the skin reaction, the body weight, the LD value, or the necropsy, clinical science, all this we checked in terms of acute dermal. And we checked that, yes, indeed, uh, till 2000 mg per kg, this kind of formulation can be used for uh, different purposes uh, for their the toxic nature was not present even at this range, which is like in UCD guidelines, basically it is category five. So with that high amount of drug also, it does not show uh, particularly the toxic nature. We also did mutagenic study, genotoxicity, the subectodermal study for longer duration exposure of the drug. All this study showed that firstly, it is non-toxic uh, and then it is non-mutagenic. It doesn't show any mutagenesis. It was non-abrasional, so basically no chromosomes or DNAs are getting damaged because of the high dose till 2000 mg per kg. And also it is non-clustogenic also. So the cells are intact, the DNAs are intact, there is no chromosomal abrasion, and it, there is no DNA mutation happening around, and it is not toxic till 2000 mg per kg, which is really a bigger dose, high dose to consider. So given all this, ultimately we, what we found out is that the, the the device that we prepared were smart enough, pH responsive. We can tune it to hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity according to our uh, requirement. It is again, entirely tunable. Uh, so the surface modification, there are a lot of opportunities out there. So all these things are uh, well, uh, the tunability is really good for particularly this kind of. We also did some of the experiment with uh, the silicon nanoparticles with that. So to make it, uh, Patch, so basically silicon nanoparticle patch, where we loaded the ketoprofen drug and did some study. Now this study was done in DRDO Pune. So, uh, uh, so this entire three works that I have talked about were done in DRDO Pune and some of it we are continuing in, uh, in my current university, which is MIT University here, uh, checking the properties and the surface modifications of this kind of uh, drug and nanocomposites. We published some of the works that I have given, some of the work that has been published uh, taking this uh, entire work. Uh, Well-established uh, publication houses, and it was quite uh, well appreciated about all the works depending on this taking smart nanomaterials. Uh, now, having said that, the future still holds a lot of work, a lot and lot of work has to be done, whether it in, it in terms of target specificity, to, particularly locate and make the surface changes so that it can go for, to a particular location, or whether it is reliability, that we can make the same kind of nanoparticle again and again with the same procedure, the affordability to make it more affordable for the common people, the lesser toxicity to include more and more uh, from, from a composite to go for pure bio-related uh, bio resources so that it becomes lesser toxic uh, or optimum dose load so that you can decide with lesser load of drug, how we can achieve the more uh, eff efficacy or the surface modification is a huge zone that we have to focus on and a lot of research has to be done because we are just scratching the surface now. There are a lot of work that has to be done in terms of the nanoparticle based smart drug delivery system. So these are all the future that, that holds in this entire, uh, entire aspect. Now, that is why I say that this is just at least if I'm, uh, talking from my side, we are just scratching the surface, as I mentioned, that there are huge sea of work that has to be done. A lot of collaborations need to be done. Open space platforms like this, where we can discuss our work, we can see the opportunity that has to be talked about. And ultimately, as I was, as I started with, the whole aim is that we, it's not how, how long we live, but how, how well we live, how healthily we can live our life and uh, we can help others to live their life healthily is the uh, main thing. So, uh, yeah, I think with that, I would like to uh, conclude this particular talk. Uh, I hope that some of the work that has been discussed will be uh, help for some people to come up with new ideas, uh, new collaborations, and uh, to see what avenues can be opened through this smart drug delivery system to tackle different uh, conditions. Yeah, thank you. And again, thanks to the entire uh, fraternity and entire community to be so patiently listening to this talk. And uh, now uh, uh, we can have a small two, three questions uh, that we can answer briefly. Yeah, so, okay. Some of the questions I can see here. So one, one was that what surface modifications can be done? Uh, to these particles. So again, there are 
ample opportunities, whether it is uh, in terms of hydrophobic hydrophilicity we have discussed, whether in terms of uh, different active components can be attached to that so that the different receptor based, if you want to deliver it, so that kind of receptors can be attached to that so that it can go and attach on the receptor of some of the cells, for example, liver, lungs, whatever, wherever we're targeting. So every cell has, every tissue has their own receptor. So we can attach the surface, modify those things uh, to, so that it can go and attach there. So whether it is in terms of receptors, uh, sensitivity, in terms of magnetic nanoparticles, like we discussed, so all these things can be uh, options there. Uh, next is what could be the disease of application? Uh, other diseases can be anything. I mean, you can take cancer, you can take, you can take any, any of the diseases that we see all around us. Any disease can be, all you have to know is that what we are targeting and where we are targeting. So, yeah. Uh, can novel nanoparticle be used for corona? Uh, uh, no, obviously, this is something that just now we found out two, three years back. I mean, hugely it came into our on our face. So once the vaccine, we know what is the vaccine, what is the structure of the vaccine, obviously we can now create any nano devices to deliver it in our body system. Particularly if we take corona, now it attacks a lot of lung infection. Now it is we are seeing the, the black fungus, all different colors of the fungus that we are seeing now it is. So we do, we will require a huge amount of focus on nano take best smart delivery devices to target even the corona or, or the different uh, infectious hereafter. Once we are clear about what vaccines we're talking about, then immediately the focus will be shifting to how we can deliver that vaccine efficiently with lesser amount of dose uh, to save different lives. So yes, the future of nanotech based uh, anti-COVID uh, vaccine and other infectious uh, infections will be in huge focus in coming few years. Yes, I, I, I feel so. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, I am off the limit now. I'm crossing the time limit. So I think uh, I will, I'd like to stop here. And again, uh, thank you a lot for giving this opportunity to share the smallest work that we have been carrying out here. I'd like to thank all the my collaborators, all the institutions like DRDO Pune, DIIT, Defense Institute of Advanced Technology Pune, uh, the current university, MIT University, MIT Bio for giving me the platform, the opportunity to work uh, with my little capacity uh, to for the betterment of mankind. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>